Good morning, everyone. For today's devotion, I will start by singing The Power of Your Love. Um, I think it's really important and good to remember that the Lord's love is so powerful that um, He offers our forgiveness for everything. Um, and no matter what, He always loves us. It doesn't matter what we've done, what wrong we've committed, um, He'll always be there for us. Um, and so I think that love and forgiveness is really what this song is about. And we as people can sort of um, try and model that in our own behavior with others in the world as well. morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today I want to take up again that wonderful story in John 21 of Jesus appearing to the disciples at the Sea of Galilee after his resurrection. And after the seven disciples had caught all these fish, 153, brought them in, they had breakfast with Jesus. Then there around the fire, Jesus confronted Peter, and three times he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And each time Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And the question has been raised more than once about why did Jesus ask Peter three times whether Peter loved him? And it's probably to correspond to the three times that Peter denied Jesus in the courtyard of the high priest the night that Jesus was arrested and tried and sentenced. And so each of these times that Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you, 
corresponds to one of the times that he said, no, I don't even know who you are. I think Jesus' encounter with Peter tells us something about the nature of forgiveness and reconciliation. Because on the cross, Jesus forgave Peter. Remember from the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And there he forgave his disciples, he forgave uh, the Jewish leaders, he forgave his Roman executioners, everyone who had a hand in his death. And forgiveness, I think, sometimes is often misconstrued and misunderstood. That forgiveness is not the same as forgetting. It's not pretending that it didn't happen. So Jesus didn't pretend with Peter that nothing had ever happened. Forgiveness is not minimizing the sin. It's not saying, oh, really, it's nothing. Jesus didn't do that either. Uh, forgiveness is not submission either. It's not just gritting your teeth and bearing the sin and the abuse wherever that occurs. No, forgiveness is a decision. Forgiveness is to say, I am not going to do to you what you have done to me. That I am not going to retaliate. I am not going to seek revenge. I am not going to try and get even. That's what forgiveness is a decision not to hurt you in the way that you have hurt me. And so Jesus had already done that because he is the God of all grace, the God of all forgiveness, that he doesn't try and get even with us. He doesn't get back at us. He doesn't seek revenge or retaliation. But Jesus was seeking something more with Peter, not just forgiveness, but reconciliation. And reconciliation is removing the sin, the thing that's between us, the thing that has disrupted our relationship so that that relationship can be mended. And so Jesus sought to be reconciled to Peter. And to do that, he had to name the sin so that Peter could truly repent. And the fascinating thing about this encounter is that the third time Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? We are told that Peter was grieved. He was cut to the heart that Jesus would ask him a third time, do you love me? And so the sign of Peter's repentance was his grief, was his sorrow over the way in which he had hurt Jesus. I think that's often true for us that for there to be true reconciliation, for us to clear out the thing that has come between us, whether it's between us and the Lord or between us and someone else, there needs to be sorrow. There needs to be grief. There needs to be tears. Because there's a kind of grief that is a sign of true repentance. And so I don't think we should be afraid of our tears that we shouldn't be afraid of our grief, because I think our grief is often a sign of the fact that we realize, that we understand how our actions have hurt the Lord or hurt someone else. And so in the midst of reconciliation, I think it's okay that we pray for true grief, for genuine tears, for a sense of empathy and knowing how our sins have hurt those we love the most. Now I invite you to pray with me. Uh, find whatever it is that helps you still your mind and heart, that helps you clear out the distractions and center yourself and be alert and awake to the presence of the Holy Spirit. So let us pray.
Dear Lord Jesus, uh, we thank you that you come to us, that you seek us out, and that you not only forgive us, but seek to be reconciled to us. Lord, we ask for the grace to be able to see our sins, to acknowledge them, and to weep over them so that we may be led to true repentance and amendment of life. Lord, we ask that um, you be with us um, in this time when we are uh, with family uh, so closely and that you use this time uh, for us to, to be reconciled to one another as we need. We ask, Lord, that you move our minds and hearts and clear out the things that um, set us at odds with each other, the things that have torn the fabric of our relationships and help us to be reconciled to you and to one another. Lord, we lift up to you all those who are suffering this day, especially from this pandemic. We lift up to you those who are on the front lines uh, fighting against this, and we ask that you bless their work. We pray that um, you would be with all those whom we know and love, who are in need of our prayers, whom we now name in our hearts before you. Lord, all these things, um, all the things that weigh on our minds and hearts, all the needs of your church and of your world, um, we gather up now and lift to you in the prayer that you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, as you go through this day, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, beneath you to uphold you, behind you to defend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you his peace. And the blessing of the Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. <laughs>